more Travis Scott news unfortunately we have to keep updating on this story but it's something that is really sort of captured my um you know, imagination but it's captured my interest and in something I'm following quite closely because of the level of star that Travis Scott is and obviously the the flipping magnitude of the tra tragedy right in terms of 10 kids um passing away at a concert not due to some terrorist attack not due to them getting spiked drugs but due to just poor management poor organization poor production poor safekeeping like just poor all over the place organization in terms of getting it together that's basically led to the untimely passing of 10 children or 10 young people who went to a concert to enjoy you know listen to their favorite artists and it's just you know super super sad so i'm really curious to see how this story basically evolves and how it ends and what sort of conclusion comes out on the other side so a development that we kind of learned of recently is this courtesy of Variety. It says all turned Asherwood victims died of compression asphyxia, according to medical examiners. Of course, the autopsy has been done. It looks like on all 10 people who passed away. And I think with the exception of one, they said who kind of had some methamphetamines and cocaine and alcohol in the system. Which, so basically, I guess if you have that in your system, they can't conclusively say you died of this one thing because maybe that thing contributed to it. But for the most part, nine out of 10, which is the strong majority, died from compression asphyxia, which has obviously been caused from all the flipping stampeding and piling on and all that stuff and people falling over at the concert. Just, I can't imagine how these people feel, especially the ones, fair enough, not fair enough, but it's understandable how devastated the victims um, or the families of the victims actually feel for sure you know having somebody so young in your family being taken away from you in that way must be heartbreaking but i'm also kind of feel so bad for the people who were next to the people that passed away or who felt like they may have contributed to that person's death by stepping on them by pushing them how badly they must feel too how kind of um guilty they must feel that they kind of maybe in some way shape or form uh, played a role in somebody's untimely passing imagine how much how badly they must feel man again their kids too their brains are not even formed well fully formed yet in terms of kind of you know getting to the point of maybe being able to deal with this sort of stuff easily i'm assuming a lot of them are probably going through serious therapy to try and get over this or make sense of this it's just god damn it Courtesy of Variety it says the following All 10 victims of Travis Scott's Asher World concert died from compression asphyxia, according to a report from the medical examiner. Even the way they started it, they already mentioned his name. It's like, oh, it's over for this lad. One victim is cited as having a contributory cause of combined toxic effects of cocaine, methamphetamine, and ethanol. I don't know what ethanol is. Um, methamphetamine, I don't know what that is, or coke, I know what that is, but I don't know what ethanol is. What that is, is that kind of laughing gas? I don't know if you know that, what that is, let me know in the comments. It says, but the primary cause for all the victims was essentially being suffocated by external pressure, technically defined as respiration prevented by external pressure on the body. The report was issued on Thursday by the Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences in Houston. I guess if you're on Travis's team, because again, this is the thing I think that's so nasty about celebrity life, right? right? Because people, again, like I said in other clips or in other bits on my podcast, because of a lot of people that are basically rely on travis scott to basically allow them to live a somewhat comfortable life he pays for a lot of people's mortgages second homes private schools car leases right because of that those people are scrambling and trying to protect his to protect their interest by protecting him and that story first came out i think of somebody you know injecting or spiking no injecting yeah was it pricking one of the security guards with a needle that made him fall over somebody saying there was dodgy pills that were being exchanged in there like loads of things but most of it had to do with the fact that oh these kids went and consumed loads of drugs that's why they died and i'm, I'm guessing if you're part of travis scott's pr team you would probably be hoping or you know you're one of his publicists and stuff you'd probably secretly be, you'd secretly be hoping that the coroner's report or the autopsy would say that the majority of the kids that passed away had some sort of you know mdma ecstasy whatever in their system that kind of contributed to their death that's what you're secretly hoping for which is again crazy to kind of think about but you know these people legitimately have lives that are basically resting <clears throat> on the success of travis scott <clears throat> It continues it says here while initial reports sorry about that hay fever so while initial reports speculated that at least some of the victims had died of drug related causes with the exception of the one case of contributory causes that appears to be incorrect inaccurate of course because again that was a story planted by his pr it continues the 10 victims died and hundreds were injured after segments of the 50,000 strong crowd surged during travis scott's headlining set at the concert which was held in houston's nrg park on november 5th according to a report in washington post at least seven of the 10 victims were clustered in the small area enclosed on three sides 
size of night metal barriers that became dangerously crowded. The only thing I can say for this is a slight sliver of hope, a slight silver lining in this story. It appears as if when they sit here in the, in the report, seven of the 10 were in one area. Because that's the thing I was shocked by. I didn't really understand how the numbers were so low, considering how crazy it looked in the videos, right? Seeing especially that one video where there's kids literally crying out and trying to get someone to help them, and they're all getting crushed and they've got no way of coming out. You just think to yourself, if you can see that kid who probably looks quite small, think of who he's on top of, right? There's people underneath who are basically trying to get up as well. It's not really working. So it's not happening, of course, because of the pressure on top. So I was actually shocked that the numbers are so low. But this obviously explains it. It luckily for again for everybody especially people that attended most of the deaths only happen again luckily it's weird to say because obviously people pass away but you know what i mean they only happen in a small area so for some reason the numbers get kept really really low but looking at the video footage it doesn't really make any sense i just i guess god's grace must have been shining on some of those kids out there it continues it says the post found that most who most of those who died were close to each other in the viewing area of south quadrant where witnesses describe people collapsing under the pressure of the crowd God almighty. The victims who died included a dancer, an aspiring border agent, a student athlete, a computer programming student, a district manager at AT&T, a marketer, a pair of best friends, and a nine-year-old. Their names are Mirza Baig, Rodolfo Pena, um, Madison Dubitsky, Bariti Shahini. Um, I think that was the girl that was on life support, in it? God damn it. Um, Axel Aviel, Franco Petino, Jacob Jurinic, Brianna Rodriguez, John Hilger, and Ezra Blunt, of course, the nine-year-old. Like, God damn it. In a released, sorry, in a related development, Scott has teamed up with United States Conference, a non-partisan organization to cite the population for the got a quote. Anyway, um, yeah. Crazy, isn't it, right? Absolutely crazy. So if anything, this is maybe further confirmation that it probably is over for Travis in terms of him being able to resurrect whatever career he had beforehand, especially at the level that he was at. Because there's one thing if you were sort of like a, it's not even a good example to say, I was going to say ASAP Rocky, but it's one thing if he was just like a, not a smaller act, but if he was like an act that was just maybe only specific to like a hip-hop audience but he was essentially the black version of post malone in terms of his brand appeal and because of that it's very unlikely somebody at that level is going to want to do again 500 people shows you know what i mean you're going to go back to one and be on that on that level that you had previously and we've already seen with this whole story that came out about him with coachella where allegedly he was basically offering coachella um to play for free so that he could basically perform next year and they still turned him down so again that proves my theory i said before that he doesn't necessarily feel as remorseful as people who are making it seem as if he does and i think all this sort of like what i've even said sometimes in the podcast i said oh maybe he's just not saying he's sorry because he's trying to protect himself legally i just don't even think he's sorry anyway because he doesn't think he was at fault he clearly think it was maybe the fault of the organizers maybe the people on the on the on the ground floor maybe the whatever it may be who are handling it they should be more responsible in doing that he's basically just just the entertainment but unfortunately this wasn't him performing at somewhere like a coachella this was him performing at his own festival called Astro World. and i think what people are basically saying without saying is that if you're willing to be like the head and the kind of again there was a massive head he had to walk through to kind of get into the fucking festival of himself but if you're willing to be like the face of a festival and you're willing to receive all the plaudits when it goes right and everyone says oh my god what an amazing set how well organized you also have to be willing and ready to accept the consequences if it goes wrong because you're the face of it right you just have to accept it and i think he's him not respect accepting it and again the victims being children i just don't see a way back for the guy i really really don't and then to make matters even worse, if that wasn't worse already as it is, this really disgusting story comes out courtesy of TMZ that says the following. Travis Scott leading effort to fix concert safety, joining music safety and government leaders. Like what? What sort of nonsense is this? Like what sort of nonsense? Again, this is the PR team at work desperately trying to resurrect or kind of, um, you know, keep alive whatever career he has, of, of course, to protect their own interests. It's not necessarily looking after him in any way, shape or form because these headlines don't help. Coupled with his kind of lack or refusal to apologize or take accountability and then the offer to pay for the funeral services of some of the victims who i think a couple of them turned them down maybe i think only the nine-year-old family if supposedly i think i read somewhere turned it down and then coupled with this it just smells of somebody trying to spin a bit of good pr in their favor which again you can understand why because he's taking a complete beating in the media but i would imagine this would be a time just to kind of sit it out and let it play out in the courts again 
I don't expect this guy to go to jail. It's probably a bit excessive to think he's going to go to jail, but there's going to be massive fines paid out. He's going to suffer reputationally for it. Similar to like, again, not similar because again, that's a frivolous account, but similar to kind of Jussie Smollett and what he's going through. As time has passed, you don't want the guy to rot in prison anywhere. No one ultimately got hurt um, off of him doing that hoax. He's already been publicly embarrassed. His career's already done anyway. He should get a fine, maybe a slap on the wrist, but that should be it. He shouldn't be spending any time in jail or in prison. It's not that serious, not that deep. But I think with this Travis Scott thing, it's really difficult to say he's completely at fault for everybody dying there. Of course, he played some role in it, which is why, of course, he's in trouble. But to expect him to spend 10, you know, uh, unspecified time, you know, tripping football number times or triple digit times in flipping prison is really excessive. Should get some level of punishment, but let's not go too overboard. But again, he's not doing himself any favours with all these kind of forced attempts at kind of correcting the narrative it's just making him seem callous it's making him seem like he has no empathy um like he's not understanding the gravity or the or, of what's basically occurred and he just thinks he could just kind of keep it moving it's like no it can't mate you cannot and this isn't going to help because no one cares because essentially what's happened now to him especially off the back of that Charlemagne interview, especially off the back of the announcement from Coachella, it looks like all the whites have moved away from it, right? All the white people who were basically propping him up and making him to be a far bigger star than probably he would have been if he just stuck to hip hop. They've now basically turned their eyes, turned their back on him because he's bad for business, right? And if you know those brands, those white people, as soon as you become bad for business, they jump off you like a hot potato. Do you know what I mean? They have no qualms about turning it back on you and suddenly they forget who you are, they don't answer your calls anymore. So the fact that he's lost them doing all these sort of initiatives isn't going to help because his fan base fan base exists in that world he can't necessarily come back to hip-hop because he was never of the hip-hop you know never of the hip-hop he was never within he was never really that guy in that scene anyway he was mostly a kind of like i said a white a black version of post alone so it's just one of those cases where you just have to sit it out let it play out in the courts and hope for the best really but all this sort of stuff isn't helping let's read a bit of the article it says travis scott is getting to work to ensure an event like Trash Tra Astral World Tragedy never happens again. Joining leaders and governments in the music um, in the first of its kind initiative, teams he has learned. Not learned, it's his PR sending that information to you. Sources with direct knowledge tell us Travis has spent the last few weeks meeting leaders of the United States Conference of Mayors, a group that represents interests of more than 1,400 cities across the country. Um, we're told the goal is to form a committee made up of members of government, public safety, emergency response, healthcare, event management, music and technology, and create a safety report for future shows to follow and ensure safety security mate he's taking a piss this is like again bad example bad analogy but in, spare me a minute this is like somebody being accused of rape and then set up a charity for rape survivors it's like read the room a little bit you know what i mean this probably isn't the time use some tact maybe sit this one out for a bit We've obtained an outline of the group's goals, which also state it's aggressively um, focused on new technologies and innovations that offer ways to address these challenges. Outside of to, outside of Travis, the report will be led by a chair of the conference's tourism, parks and, and sports committee, Mayor Hilary Chavez, or Sheev, whatever her name is. That's only, is it, the only name really I'm one other person in this. No one, no one else wants to put their name on this, isn't it? They're just all standing behind whatever committee it's called, but no one wants to put their name on it. Only this mayor has... I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into that one. You remember it's Travis's first interview since blah, 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 he told Charmin that he felt he was responsibility to fix things moving forward and they should, should be sure that something like the Houston tragedy never happened again. That's again, that's presumptuous of him. He's actually thinking that he's going to get an opportunity to move it forward. What if no one wants to hear from you? What if people think you're a bad, um, what if you become bad for business for whatever group they want to set up and they decide to ditch you? How embarrassing would that be going forward? Um, of course he did but yeah these are obviously the pictures of the victims like just oh what a tragedy man honestly what a tragedy um it's probably not gonna get it's probably gonna get worse for travis before it gets any better time better and it's just gross again to see how publicists and pr work when they try and spin a tragedy or a really horrible mishap into something good for whoever um their client is because they want to make sure they're able to keep their flipping hollywood hills mansion somewhere and it. it's flipping awful it really really is